Matt Johnson here, another episode of Deck Talk. As you can see, we are inside. We're going to touch on some things that you can do from home at your computer or up here in my office. And we're going to talk about trolling patterns, namely using maps, breaking down some structure, and showing you some trolling routes so you can catch more fish as we move into the late summer months and into fall. The walleye bite's going to get better. The guys that are trolling for pike, the guys that are trolling for muskies, whatever the species might be. We'll go over some techniques, some lures, the presentations to use, and we'll show you here in the computer some maps. We'll zoom in, we'll show you some of these maps and how we would attack a piece of structure and how we would troll to be more effective when we hit the water. So let's turn around here, take a look at some of these lake maps, give you some ideas on where to fish, and uh, break them down. And hopefully, when we're all said and done, you can get in the water, use some of these trolling tactics, and catch more fish. As you can see with this first piece of oh, this first snapshot, it's got several different trolling routes. And you'll see this picture is depicted. You've got spots, you've got routes. The spots are going to be labeled A through E there, and you'll see the trolling routes are going to be yellow lines. And we picked a variety of structure types so that we can show you and move through these pieces of structure to indicate why they'll be using this spot now first week of September and why they would use some of these spots as we move into the months of October and the fall trolling pattern. So to start things off let's talk about the spot. Spot A is a main, main lake point. It's the main part of the point, the very abrupt part. You can see there this map will tell you it's in about 10 feet of water, 8 to 10 feet of water. It's going to be your shallower stuff. Oftentimes if you can find rock on these spots you can expect to find fish. As you move out to B it's kind of an inside turn. That would be oftentimes where you would start maybe or get really focused on your trolling pattern. C is going to be the tip of that point. That's what we call the hot zone. A lot of times that's where you get bit. If you're targeting bigger fish in a system, whether it be pike or muskies, a lot of fish like to hold in those areas because they will school up or they will find the schooling up bait fish. The crappies, the bluegills, the perch, the minnows, they will sit in those weed lines and outside points. And you actually see them with your locator as you move over with your electronics. You will see that some of those fish are sitting on those spots. So from A, B, and C, it kind of covers that entire main lake expansive point. As you move across the lake there, the other end on the east side there, you'll see spot D is the main lake basin, but you'll see it's where it's the steepest along that shoreline. You'll see the breaks go from 5 to 25 in a relatively short distance. And as you move down into spot E, that's going to be your main lake basin area. So very good spots there to look at. It kind of covers this is actually a pretty large area. It's actually probably about five to seven hundred acres, the spot you're seeing here in the snapshot. So just quite large. Moving on to these trolling runs. How I approach pieces of structure like this, depending on the season, is I usually run the inside. As you can see, that first line on your far left, that'll be kind of an inside edge, and I usually will pull shallow running crankbaits. You know, those usually work pretty well as you're moving into those areas to cover water. You can move felt very aggressive this time of year, especially as we're still seeing water temps in the upper 70s. You can move some of those inside lines, especially when the sun drops and get walleyes, pike. We've got a lot of big bass doing that. So shallow running crankbaits, you could even troll something like a Salmo Hornet that will dive down close to that bottom in that 8 to 10, 12 foot range. Very, very effective. And again, the only issue with this time of year on spots like that, you have to check and see what the weeds are doing because you can spend a lot of, day, a lot of time pulling uh, weeds off your crankbaits if you're not careful. So that could be good. You can also pull some spinner rigs and some Lindy type rigs through those areas too with live bait. They will catch you some fish as well. So that's a good spot to consider starting at, especially if the weeds are not as present. You can move through there when these fish are up there shallow or feeding. And that's another spot that you come back to in the fall as these fish move up into the fall period to put the feed bags on and gorge themselves and fatten themselves up. You want to come back up there and kind of focus in on those spots, especially for those anglers that like to get out there after dark and chase down some of these fish. So the second line, the middle yellow line there, you're going to see that goes right across the outside of this point. That to me it was probably going to be one of your more consistent trolling patterns for catching fish and having a shot at a giant one. You know, those guys are trolling, you know, deep crankbaits for pike right now. That's a great place to start because this warm water, these fish are going to find the deepest, coolest water in the system. And the main lake basin is off there to your right where you see it's 25, 30 feet, and this is not far. So big fish, big pike and muskies will slide up onto these spots to feed because they like the comfort of the cool water. So it's the nearest deep by largest point with the nearest deep water. Very, very important spot to figure out. Another thing to consider in that spot is your walleye action. As you get into that tip, oftentimes that hard bottom, you'll have gravel or rock on that tip, and those are where your fish will school up. 
so you can go over that oftentimes I'll slow down and more work more of a zigzag pattern as I cross that tip to try and get some of these fish to go as I approach what I call that strike zone spot C on the map would be kinda like I said strike zone the hot zone the bass guys are usually camped out there you know pitching roller jigs or rock jigs or just casting and retrieving crankbaits but you'll see walleye guys oftentimes troll right through that too and do very well and be very successful I mean you can definitely slow down there and pitch a jig a live jig and minnow or anything of that nature you know oftentimes I'll throw one of those sinking uh, salmo hornets because I'll let it sit for a few seconds it'll sink down five ten feet I'll crank it back and I can actually hit that bottom out there in, in 18 to 22 feet of water and that can be very effective for walleyes bass pike and I've caught some giant crappies doing that so if you keep getting bit and whacked as you're trolling across these points don't feel bad about turning around and actually pitching crankbaits or actually working a spot over with the trolling motor on the front instead of actually running the outboard or, or a smaller kicker motor to move these crankbaits so you can do two full on spots like this you can run it with a with the trolling motor and actually troll trying to figure out where these fish are and then you can slow down and actually hone in on them and sometimes you'll see them on the outside edges too of that point well like spot B and then let's say there was a spot F on this map if we put it there it'd be on the opposite end just south of C on the other inside turn so you could actually hone in on fish on those spots too so but I'll generally move those trolling runs and I'll just kind of go back and forth depending on uh, what the fish are doing and I'll try to cover depths anywhere from 13 feet to 20 feet depending on what the weeds are doing so can, I can cover and see where these fish are holding sometimes they want to be right tied to the weeds other days they want to be out a little deeper so you know vary your speed you know anywhere between a mile mile and a half to three miles an hour depending on the crankbait you're using and the fish you're targeting sometimes walleyes want it moving with the bow mount trolling motor just a mile an hour nice and slow steady wobble on that crankbait other times they want to cook in at two and a half three miles an hour pulling some of these crankbaits sometimes even faster and of course your pike musky guys you'll see them trolling even faster than that so try some different things see what works see, obviously you can cover some of these spots within five ten minutes you can come back through at a different speed at a different depth and see if they're at a different spot so I generally like to give each of these spots a few runs to see if they're in a different location, meaning the depth more than anything, and then to see if they want a different speed. So try a couple things in each spot. As you next spot on this map, you see the uh, yellow line on your far east shoreline. That's going to be your deep break. That's going to be where a lot of fish are going to hold right now in the summer months. They're going to want that cool water, like we mentioned, while they move up to feed on spot C they're oftentimes just hold on spot D and E and move up onto these breaks to feed. That's a distinct weed line and probably seven to ten feet of water. When you get out there from you know 10, 11 to 15 is kind of where you want to be. And these fish don't have to make large moves to get up to where the food is. So they can sit in the comfort of the deeper water, move up and get some of these spots. So all three of those are good trolling ones and they all have their place in time and definitely spots you're going to want to check out. Let's move on to uh, another map. You'll see um, this map here now. This is kind of cool. It's got another main lake hump, but it actually has an island and it's got some deeper water and a lot of similar structure and, and I did throw a couple spots in here you're seeing A, B, C and D and again those are going to be more predominant spots spots you want to maybe focus in on a spot specific spot A you can see is a main lake point the tip of that point B is a very nice inside turn D is a shallow point that's oftentimes sandy or an inside weed line and C again is going to be another main lake point that comes out in the deeper water you'll see three trolling patterns the one on the very top above A is a great way just to cover a weed line again you'll see another basin area to the north of that where it really bowls out and plateaus for a long period of time cool water comfort water comfort zone for these fish they move up onto that weed line to feed and this is where I'll begin I'll pull a salmo hornet or a salmo minnow something along those lines even maybe cast a, a salmo boxer or, or a bullhead something like that to be more spot specific so I'll usually troll with the crank and then I'll come back through and cast specific spots that I'm getting bit at. So very, very effective. As you move back down around, uh, just south of D there, you see another trolling line. Again, that's going to be, again, moving off that, you know, another weed line area there next to deep water. And you can sometimes just continue your trolling line from the, the top all the way around into B and down to past D and actually connect those two yellow lines we've talked about so far. So you can actually run a big pattern. Uh, the reason I put a gap in there is just to show you that uh, the, the weed lines here adjacent to these main lake points can hold a lot of fish. So a lot of guys really focus in on structure and they troll around structure and that's it. But sometimes the most deadly spot in this lake, on uh, any lake you target, can be just a main lake weed line. 
you know, just covering water is the name of the game because these fish are oftentimes doing the same thing. They're cruising. These big predator fish will, will cruise looking for meals. And if you're going to get some of these fish to bite, sometimes it's a matter of just covering. It's the more the amount of water you cover is the amount of fish you're going to catch. So, you know, spot specific can be important, but when we're talking about trolling, you want to cover water and cover as much water as you can to see where these fish are holding and then go back and target them. So, then again, you go across the far west side of the lake, you see another trolling pattern around point C, it's another main lake point going into the deepest water of the lake. You can see some 40, 45 foot water there just east of spot C leading to the deep water. And again, these fish will slide up, especially here in September for guys that are still pulling cranks and uh, pulling uh, lindy rigs and those sorts of things. You can cover a lot of water moving these main lake points and not beat yourself over the head trying to pitch at them or cast at them. Uh, for me, I'll come through at a mile and a half, two miles an hour with a Salmo Hornet or some sort of crankbait along that pattern. And then if I need to, I can downsize to either drift with a jig and minnow or I can pull a spinner rig with a, a crawler or, or a minnow attached to it, a sucker, small sucker minnow, something like that. And that'll catch you everything. That'll catch you bass, pike, walleyes. A lot of guys are stuck on leeches and uh, crawlers for some of these rigs, but, you know, I will even upsize to, to a small sucker minnow, a 3, 4, even 5-inch sucker minnow on some of these spinner rigs, and I found out that it catches catches you a lot of fish. And the nice thing about fishing some of those live bait rigs like that is you can actually troll at a mile, mile and a half, just slowly troll and even a, a fast drift over these spots. And, and when you feel like you're on a spot that's holding fish and you keep getting bit, you can stop the boat and let the minnow do a lot of the work. So it's not like a crankbait where you stop the boat and it wants to float to the surface or sink depending on whether you're using a floating, sinking, or suspending bait. Uh, for me, I'll actually, you know, some of those live bait techniques, I can stop on a spot and, and I can let, let these fish kind of, these minnows do their thing. Um, so that's very important. There's a lot of ways to go about fishing some of these pieces of structure. And again, we've talked about it in the past, but again, as you move across some of these structures, what I like to do is, is, is kind of a zigzag pattern. Move up and hit that maybe 7, 8, 9, 10 foot range if that's where the weed line is. Then slide back out to 15, 18, 19 and kind of zigzag back and forth and try and determine what level these fish are holding at. Um, so a lot of ways to look at these pieces of structure, and these are just, you know, hitting on the tip of the iceberg for ways to hit some of these lakes and troll effectively. Um, those are some of the things that I would definitely focus on as we look at these two snapshots. Of course, you can talk about many other things. You can talk about flats. You can talk about lead core. You can talk about all these sorts of things. But to make things simple for the guys, and I had a couple questions through emails about trolling, to make things simple, just um, long lining, something like a Salmo Hornet, like we've talked about many times. It's a very, very effective bait for me. I use it on, for many different species. And it's a very easy bait to fish. They're tuned right out of the box. You tie them on. You know, you let out depending on how much line you want, the depth you want to go, 30, 40, 50 feet of line. And you run it at a mile and a half to two and a half miles an hour, and it'll get down there on those outside weed lines very well. And it's a good size. It's a two inch, inch and a half to two and a half inch bait, depending on the size you're going to run. And it's right, perfect forage for most of the fish we're targeting, whether you're going to catch walleyes, pike, bass. I've seen some giant muskies caught, caught on these hornets. So it will catch you everything. You can put a handful of lines out there and be very effective. So... A lot of ways to do this, a lot of presentations to cover. So like I said, that Salmon Hornet, one of my go-tos. The color's not as big for me. I do carry a variety of colors, whether it's the Red-Tailed China or the Dalmatian. Uh, the Hot Holographic colors, there's a few of those out there that look phenomenal in the water and really give off a lot of, a lot of shine. The vibration, the pulse of these baits are what really put them over the edge. So they have a really awesome wobble to them. They give off a lot of positive cadence that really hones into these fish and gets these fish turned into a frenzy and gets them going. And it's hard for a fish to uh, you know, look at one of these baits and not just crush it. So hold on tight. Make sure your rod's in a rod holder and if you're eating a sandwich and not sitting on your knee because they'll rip it right out of your hand. So a lot of positive options out there for crankbaits. And again, as you walk into these retail stores like Thorn Brothers, you'll see a wall of crankbaits. Talk to one of the shop pros and get an opinion. Uh, if you go to Thorn Brothers there in Blaine, uh, talk to, to John Nelson. He's a crankbait master when it comes to trolling. Fished a lot of professional walleye tournaments and he knows his stuff and he'll point you in the right direction. So otherwise, other tactics or other uh, methods and tools I've been using is that uh, that strike sensor, that bulldog strike sensor has been awesome. It looks like a giant hockey puck, and it's basically a strike indicator. So as you're trolling, uh, like I said, it looks like a hockey puck. You see a picture there on your screen. And what it does is you mount it someplace on your boat, whether it's a gunnel, an inside compartment. It actually has a rail mount, so you can mount it onto a rail. There are several ways to attach this to your boat. And then you put your favorite 
rod holder onto that it has four screw or, or spots to put screws into so you can mount your favorite rod holder onto this and it twists and as it twi twists and reaches a certain point it beeps so you can actually be doing something else it's great for me when I'm guiding because especially if I'm trying to help clients or educate them or we're eating lunch and we're just doing trolling as we're kind of taking a break or whatever it might be or if I have my kids out there and they're dinking around they all hear the fish bite because it'll beep so you can adjust the tension there in the middle there as you see and what that is is it'll take a little more pressure for that thing to spin and as it rotates and spins uh, you hear that loud beep you hear that loud sound and that tells you that the fish has pulled far enough that uh, you know it's not just a snag or, or a weed and you can sense it and I've played with them enough that I can actually adjust them the sensitivity on these things just enough so that unless I really get ball with weeds or it'll actually pull through the weeds and when a fish hits it it'll give it enough oomph that it actually trips the alarm so very very cool cool tool there they add to your boat if you're into trolling I definitely recommend getting some I've had them on all my boats for the last few years and uh, they are available there at Thorn Brothers Matt Ernst uh, a walleye pro on the FLW tour uh, owns the company and runs it and helped design it and uh, he's had a lot of positive success and has several of his peers out there using those and catching a lot of fish with that bulldog strike sensor. So stop in at Thorn Brothers, check them out if you're in the area. Otherwise, uh, thornbros.com will have them there for sale online if you want to see them. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, you can check out uh, the link there on the screen if you want to take a look at the bulldog strike sensor website and learn more and see some videos. So another cool tool. Otherwise, you know, line choices, again, it comes down to what you want to do. A lot of guys are trolling with, uh, you know, thin braids. I'll use some of these thin power pros. I'll use a 10 or 15 pound test line. You can add a fluorocarbon leader if you'd like, or you can actually just troll straight, you know, 8, 10, or 12 pound monofilament, depending on what you want to do. Again, I've turned into a braid guy because of the sensitivity, the no stretch, and then I'll put some kind of leader onto the end. Uh, but it's all personal preference on what you want to do with line. I don't know if there's exactly a definite wrong way if you're going to just straight line and troll. Um, you'll see some guys argue the monofilament because of the stretch factor, so you're not just ripping lips when, when the fish grabs and turn the opposite direction. But I've done well with braids. I've done well with mono. Um, kind of pick your poison there and uh, see which works for you. Maybe try two rods and see which one uh, you like the best. So trolling, you know, cover a lot of water, have a lot of fun, vary your speed, get at it and um, you know you have a good time doing that so so there's some maps there and um, it can be very effective well there you have it hopefully this helped you figure out trolling patterns a little more some of the things to look for and some of the ways to approach these pieces of structure how to troll in and out zigzag focus on some of those things we talked about the right lure choice those salmo hornets the minnows, the different options depending on the depth you want to go, the speed you're going to travel, all those sorts of things, the species you're going to target. So a lot of things go into trolling. The nice thing about trolling, like we said, we cover a lot of water. You can be very effective no matter the season. And when it starts to get cold, as we move into the fall months, you can bundle up, put on your comfortable gear, get out your ice armor clothing that you can wear in the ice house, and put it on in the boat and you can be comfortable so you can troll be more effective cover water catch more fish have a lot of fun doing it so check out some lake maps play around yourself market some of these spots go out there and test your strategies see if they work for you and have more fun so thanks for watching this episode of deck talk matt johnson here we'll catch you next week when we start touching base on fall patterns as you move into the summer or late summer months early fall to catch more and bigger fish as these fish put the feed bags on so Get out there catching fish, and we'll see you again soon.